Stupid oh. Goomba! Stupid oh. Goomba! Stupid Goomba! Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here. Stupid Goomba! Stupid Goomba! Stupid! Uh, can you excuse me for a sec? There we go. I guess if it wasn't apparent enough, I've been playing a lot of Fallout 4. And I gotta say, I really love the game. I'll be openly honest, I think I've spent more than 100 hours in this game already, and there's no sign of stopping. But what I really love about the Fallout games, and 4 being no exception, is how it takes place in a post-nuclear war America. Because of this, homages, easter eggs, and all manner of interpretations of American culture have found their way into these games. And to celebrate its release, these are my top 5 US references in Fallout 4. Fair warning though, there's a decent amount of story spoilers in this video. Nothing too intense, but you've officially been warned. STUPID! Enjoy! Number 5. Food Paste. In the Suffolk County Charter School, you'll quickly discover several cafeteria trays full of globby pink food paste. Apparently, it was a part of some government food program that was being tested on in the school as a control group. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that no outside food is to be brought on campus as of this week. This goes for faculty as well as students. We have received generous donations for our implementation of the Nutrition Alternative Paste Program. We owe our benefactors strict adherence to the rules they have set forth. Thank you for your attention. This is Principal Hudson, signing off. If you look around the school enough, you'll actually find that whatever the food paste was made of was grounded up and processed through some sort of dispensing machine. Without spoiling too much, let's just say it created its own fair share of problems for the school. This is a nod back to the pink slime fiasco back in 2012. Officially called Lean Finely Textured Beef, or LFTB for short, it acted as an additive for ground beef and other processed meats. It's created by heating and then centrifuging out fat and then is exposed to gases or acids to kill bacteria. And boy, did it cause a public outcry. While it was approved by the US Department of Agriculture in 2001, people took one look at the stuff after watching ABC's coverage of the story and made more than a big stink about it. Eventually, Beef Products Incorporated sued ABC for the false claims. A very small nod to modern times of America, but it's things like that that make Fallout so interesting. Number 4. Trade democracy. A form of government in which the leader is chosen by vote and everyone has equal rights. Liberty Prime. Okay, yeah, I know. Liberty Prime was first introduced in Fallout 3, but come on! It's Liberty freaking Prime! It's the patriotic interpretation of the ever-loved Optimus Prime. Memorial Site. Recognized. Patriotism subroutines. Engaged. Honoring the fallen is the duty of every red-blooded American. And if Michael Bay and his billions of dollars have proven anything, it's that Americans are lined up at the gate to see the next iteration of Transformers. Again, and again, and again. And if being the namesake of and sounding eerily similar to the most iconic giant robot in America isn't enough, watching Liberty Prime maul down everything by way of pew-pew lasers and football-tossing nukes is pretty amazing. I admit, as much as I hate to, Americans with myself included love explosions in action, and Prime delivers this in spades. I mean, have you seen this guy just take apart a behemoth super mutant? It's amazing! Number 3. My knight in shining armor. Question is, why does he come all this way, risk life and limb for an old private eye? Nick Valentine. Nick and nearly everything that surrounds him in story, environment, and character screams film noir as loud as every geek on the planet did when they found out Cloud was in Smash. A prime example of Fallout's cultural time freeze between the 30s and 50s, this charming synth truly pays homage to the genre. Stephen Russell really nails the part of a 50s detective. I've been cooped up in here for weeks. Turns out the runaway daughter I came here to find wasn't kidnapped. She's Skinny Malone's new flame. And she's got a mean streak. Anyway, you got troubles, and I'm glad to help. But now ain't the time. Let's blow this joint. Then we'll talk. It wasn't good enough to simply have a noir detective. You have a run-in with a street gang that you swear came right out of the movies. Now I openly admit, I don't know much about specific film noir aside from its general aesthetics, but it's really well-crafted characters like Nick Valentine that make me want to dive into this genre. Good night, sweet prince. Here's to all the old days. Number two. Been thinking about trying something new with my hair, but uh, why mess with perfection? The Adam Cats. 
I love these guys. While I was in the middle of doing some Brotherhood of Steel quests, I thought to myself, man, power armor in this game sure feels like working on and taking care of a car. No sooner had I spoken that, I stumbled upon Zeke and the Adam Cats power armor gang. I honestly don't know what else to say. It's like Bethesda picked John Travolta right out of Greece, put him and his gang in power armor, and just let him loose on the wasteland. I love it. The jackets, the love of powerful fast machines, the hair. Did a lot of work in Greece to get your hair like this, Jack. I just love this homage to the greaser gangs of the 50s, even more so than the tunnel snakes. Yeah, that's right. Tunnel snakes are a joke. Adam Cat's where it's at, Jack. These cats are so hip and so jive that it honestly made me want to take an extended leave of absence from the Brotherhood, join his gang, and make a hot rod of my own. I knew you were hip the moment you walked in here. Adam Cat material all the way. Number one. The music. Nowhere else in gaming media, or heck, general media for that matter, have I seen such a resurgence of popularity for 40s and 50s music. Again, I admit that this kicked off way back in 2008 with Fallout 3, but this is something that has mesmerized me to no end. While my other entries in this video are fun nods to the past US culture, it's not likely we're gonna see Greasers Down the Street or the resurrection of Film Noir. But this? The inclusion of all of these time-appropriate hits from folks like Dean Martin, The Ink Spots, Billy Ward and the Dominoes, and the legendary Ella Fitzgerald, it just brought a resurrection of popularity to hits that time had almost forgotten. While I admit this resurrection is small in scale compared to other media, I promise you, after Fallout utilized songs like 60 Minute Man for their game, a whole lot of people started looking up this era of music to sample for themselves. Heck, in Fallout 4, there are a decent number of original pieces that bring back the style of music back into the modern world like Good Neighbor, sung by Linda Carter's character Magnolia. No matter how you slice it, Fallout in its entirety does a truly excellent job not only of creating an open world for people to explore for 60 plus hours, but also paying homage to America's late and even recent past in both big and small ways. And that's something that really speaks volumes to me, and I hope it does for you too. But thanks for watching everyone, and a special thanks to Team 4 Stars Takahata 101 for his super mutant performance. If you like this, click on the little eye on the top right corner of the screen to check out my take on cultural influences of Eastern versus Western RPGs using Fallout 4 and Xenoblade Chronicles X as examples. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date on all of my culture and gaming videos. But until next time everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba Singh, Ad Victorium, and signing out.